G'day guys, Elfie here and welcome to episode 4 of the Custom Entities tutorial series. By the end of this video we're going to get that entity we made appear in Minecraft last episode looking more lively with some animations. If you haven't yet watched the previous videos and followed along, I'd pause this video here and go back and watch them through so that you're ready to move ahead from here. Today we're going to start in Blockbench, so load that up and your model. Since we're working in the animations, head to the Animate tab and then add an animation. In my case, it's going to be the walk animation. To make this happen, I need to set up each leg to move how I want it to. This first animation is going to be based on keyframes and is one of the three main types of animations we'll look at today. As you can see, when I'm in the animate tab and I try and rotate my leg A group, it goes all weird. This is because the pivot point for this group is not where I need it to be. So this is where you head back into edit mode and adjust the pivot point of the groups to where they need to be. To make it behave like I want, I also need to separate the two cubes in the leg into separate bones so that I can rotate them independently while also having the option of moving them together. Spend some time swapping between edit and animate to get your pivot points correct. Think about joints that, of that particular entity that you're creating. As you can see, now that I've got them where they should be, I can move the whole leg by selecting leg A, but I can then move A2 independently to create the bend I want in my leg. In this way, I have independent parts, but I can choose to move the whole leg as one bone. I'm keeping these animations very simple, and I suggest at this stage you do the same. As you explore more and get more comfortable with Blockbench, it will get easier to make animations more involved. The white dots in the bottom section are called keyframes. It is these keyframes that determine our animation. Minecraft will move the bone steadily from one keyframe to the next based on the time you set the keyframe. So I set the initial keyframe as to how I want the leg to look, and then set up some other keyframes for how I want the leg to move. I can leave A2 where it is unless I want to add more complexity to my animation. At this stage, this animation is a run once and then it will reset, but that's fine, we can adjust that. My next animation is going to be the wings flapping. And for this animation, I don't want to do keyframes. This animation is going to be the second type of animation we look at today, a math-based animation. Instead of keyframes, we're going to use a little bit of maths, trigonometry specifically, or circular functions, to determine the way the wings move. First up, I need to adjust the pivot point of the wings so they're jointed where I want them to be. I find it easier to do the pivot points after I've completed the model and rendered it in Minecraft. There are lots of mathematical functions you can use in Minecraft animations, but the two I've found most useful in animations are math.sign and math.cos. Unlike keyframe animations, these use a variable, in this case, the animation time, to determine where the bone should be. However, maths being maths and circular functions being circular, this animation will continue forever within the boundaries we set. In this case, here you can see what altering the numbers does to my animation. There is an amplitude number, in this case how far the wing rotates back and forth, and a period number, which will determine how fast the animation runs. The final number is what we would call a constant and determines the middle point of the rotational movement. I know circular functions as a math teacher, but they don't always make absolute sense in these animations to me. So I generally mess with the numbers one at a time until I get the look that I want. With both wings now moving as I want, it is time to create the third animation, sleep. This will not really be an animation in the movement sense, as this is what I would call a static animation, and is the final type of animation we will create in this episode. Basically, if this animation is running, the entity will look like it's asleep. For these static animations, you only need one keyframe for the bones you want to control, right at the start. Okay, that's enough from me for now. I suggest you pause the video or rewatch parts as you need and get your animations ready. Come back and press play again once you're happy with your animations. With the animations complete, it is time to add these to our pack so that Minecraft can actually read them. So while in the Animation tab, click on Animation and then Export Animations. Now, you can either put it somewhere safe and drag it into the appropriate place like we did the geometry and texture files in the previous videos, or you can save it directly into the Resource Pack slash Animations folder. Whichever way you want to do it, with your animation file in the Animations directory in the Resource Pack, it is time to connect those animations to our entity. In our resource pack slash entity file, we need to add a section called animations. Don't forget the quotes, commas and colons. Inside that new group, we're going to define our three animations and point Minecraft to the animation file. So for me, flap should point to animations.drosophila.flap. Sleep to sleep and walk to walk. 
That's awesome, but Minecraft still doesn't know when to run these animations. So we need to create something called an animation controller. And it is this that Minecraft uses to determine which animation to run when. Create a file in the resource pack slash animation controllers directory. In my case, it will be called drosophila.animation underscore controllers.json. With this created, again, I go and steal the animation controller from another entity. It really doesn't matter which entity at this stage, we're going to pretty much delete the vast majority of the file regardless. In this case, I actually use the cat file as a template. Now, a lot of documentation refers to animation controllers as state machines. And what this means for us is the entity is always within a state within our animation controller. And we need to tell it when to move states. For me, I want it in the default state, the one the entity loads into. I want the animation flat running. We use the short names we defined in the entity file in the previous section. Now, my next animation walk, I only want to happen when the entity is moving. So I put a transition in. This says to Minecraft, when the entity meets this criteria, in my example here, is moving, change to the walking state. In the walking state, I'm going to run the flap and walk animations. These query functions are too many to list on here, but if you check out the website on screen now, you'll find them all listed. Basically, you use these queries to determine when an animation should change state. The most common I use are query.variant, query.mark variant, and query.skin ID. But with a bit of experimenting, I'm sure you can find some that work for you. As we're just wanting the walk animation to run when the entity is moving, query.modified move speed makes the most sense. Now that's great, but what happens when the entity stops moving? I need to stop the walk animation. To do this, we're going to make it return to the default state if the entity is not moving. That is, its move speed is zero. Now, we also need to add an animation controller to tell Minecraft when to run these animations. I always use control or CTRL as the name. It's just a habit, call it whatever works for you, but point it to your controller. For me, it's controller.animation.drosophila.control. Um, finally, anything we want to run on the entity, in this case, it's only our animation controller, it needs to be added to the scripts section in the resource pack slash entity file. Um, set it up as shown on screen now. Okay, with all that done, let's go test it out. Okay, great, animations are working, wings are flapping all the time, which we expect, and the legs are moving too. But notice that the walking animation isn't stopping properly. The wing flap is perfect, but even when the entity isn't moving, the legs are still going. A small tweak to the query should fix it. Instead of greater than zero and equals zero, I'm going to swap to greater than 0.1 and less than 0.1. Let's head back to Minecraft to test. And yes, now when the fly isn't walking, the legs aren't moving. Rinse and repeat for all the animations you want running. Remember the entity can only be in any one state in any one animation controller at any given time. So think carefully about the transitions between states if you have multiple states. We will use a third state next episode to implement the sleep animation. However, to trigger that state change, we're going to have to interact with our fly and that's covered in the next episode. That brings us to the end of this episode. Don't forget you can come back and rewatch any parts you need to. Um, tune into the next video where we make our entity interactable and we're going to be able to feed, breed and put our entity to sleep. If you're having issues with this episode in particular, please check the common issues link in the video description. And if that doesn't help, reach out in the comment section below on Twitter at EduElfie or on the Minecraft Education Discord group. The link is in the video description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.